Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our lighthouse. This has been one of the most requested pieces um, going on seven years now and it's finally materialized. Very happy with how it turned out. Um, you can make it with or without the base. We've included a uh, bonus base that you'll find in the extras folder. Of course, we'll go through that assembly, uh, but we're actually going to start with the uh, actual lighthouse first. So just like we always do, we're going to start off by, uh, well, constructing and working on some of the little individual pieces so that ultimately we can just put everything together um, at the end. Okay, so off camera here, um, I put together a few of the windows and uh, we sort of have like a, a reverse extrusion sort of thing going on with the window so that they, instead of extruding out, got them extruded into the actual structure. And there are five windows that are the same size. Okay, so I'll show you here. And putting these together is gonna to be a little bit different than what you're used to. Okay, so I have four of them already completed. I didn't wanna do the same thing uh, six times. So there's five that are the same size and one that's just a little bit smaller, okay? And each of the windows is made up of this piece here, the main structure. And of course you wanna go ahead and make sure you fold everything at the score lines. Now, uh, what we're gonna do again, because this is kind of recessed inwards, ultimately when we create it, the face of the window is gonna be sunken in. And this is my texture here, okay? I have texture here, here, uh, the smooth sides on this side. So you wanna fold it in a manner where everything that's visible is texture, okay? So each window is gonna have one of those, it's gonna have this little black part that's gonna go inside. We also have this little piece here, and that's gonna go right here on the bottom of the inside of the window. And we added that little piece um, so that when you do light this up, the tabs don't show through in case your light is very strong. And it's an opportunity to run this through your embossing machine as well to add a little bit of a brick feature to it. Okay, so the small one, the small window is gonna have a smaller piece here while the larger window is gonna have a larger piece, okay? So again, five large windows, one small window. We have a piece of vellum for the small one. You'll, you'll see that that piece of vellum is the only one that fits in that area. And we have vellum for the large windows. There's gonna be five of these vellum pieces that are all the same size. And those are gonna go right on the back. Okay, so I'll show you how that works in a second. And then also, we have these little overlays that are gonna go on the outside once everything's complete, and we have five large, and there's also a little element that's gonna go in the center there. I did mine in a gold foil that I also embossed, and then there's gonna be a small one for the small window. Okay, so I already put together four of the five large windows. We're gonna start off by putting the window together. Okay, so again, I have everything folded. This is all texture here. Okay, texture on this side, this side, the top and bottom. The tabs are actually gonna go on the back, so they're gonna be hidden like that. Okay, so the tabs are not gonna be visible from the front. We should have nothing but solid cardstock visible in this area here. And these tabs are <clears throat> what we're gonna use to actually anchor this to the structure. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin by putting glue on this little triangular tab here. And we're gonna glue that to the back of this piece here. You wanna make sure that you've got it nice and lined up and you're gonna press that tab like so, right there. Okay, and then this tab's gonna go on top as well, behind it, behind this tab, but on top of this surface. So it's a little unconventional, because I'm not even sure we've done this sort of, uh, well, I'm calling it reversed, recessed, extruded, recessed, um, whatever the terminology is. Okay, but the tabs are gonna go behind it. Okay, so I've got the two on top. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna glue these to what I'll consider the back or the inside of the window. Or the frame, I guess you could say. Okay, so again, that's gonna go right on top. Just make sure that this wall here, you're pushing it as far as it'll go and that it's all nice and lined up. 
Okay, just give that a quick press. Don't use too much glue. <clears throat> if you're waiting more than a few seconds for this to set, then you're probably caking this with too much glue. So ease up on the glue a little bit. All right, we've got one tab left there. Pop that right on top. There we go. Okay, so that's what you should be left with. And you can see there, we've got texture here, 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 and here. And this on this side is all smooth. Now that's only if you're using um, textured cardstock like I am. This is American Crafts cardstock. Okay, so now we've got this little black piece and I'm gonna just put little dots of glue on this. Just tiny little dots all the way around. Like that. And we're gonna pop this right inside. Just drop it right in there, it should fit. You might need to give it a little nudge left or right or up or down and just press that down. You can put that on your surface and press down. Use your table for leverage. There we go, okay. And if it's not completely flush and you have a little bit of that background color or the structure color on there, that's okay. It kind of gives it a nice dimensional look. So it's pretty cool. All right, now we'll flip it over and apply some glue, uh, mostly around the inside perimeter. And we'll take our little piece of vellum. In my case, I've got a nice gold vellum. We'll pop that right on there. Just press down all the way around, make sure it's making good contact. You can put that down on your surface and also press down like that. And if you're worried that you might destroy something, just grab a dowel and that can really help you kind of push down and get everything in there, okay? So now that we have that in there, remember these little pieces that I was talking about? This tiny one here is for the small window. This one is for the larger window and we're gonna put that on the windowsill. Okay, so just throw a little bit of glue on there. And we're gonna pop that right in onto the surface right here. And you can kind of just, you can pull this tab under just to kind of press it down like that. All right, so we're gonna repeat the same process here with the small window. Now, obviously you're gonna repeat this process four more times with the four large windows that are remaining. Uh, the process for the small window is exactly the same as it is for the larger windows. It's just a little bit smaller, which means that you really got to get your, your surgeon skills on point and just also Use a little less glue since the tabs are a little bit smaller. Okay, so if you're using AC cardstock or any textured cardstock, I'm putting glue on the texture part of the little tab and popping it right on top of the outside of the window. And give that a quick press. There we go. And we'll repeat the same thing with these two remaining tabs on the other side. And these are symmetrical, so when you put that little black piece in, or when you go to install it on your house, or on the lighthouse, I should say, uh, it doesn't really matter which way is up or down. Okay, so just make sure that that's all nice and lined up. Give it a quick press. And I put glue on both tabs, so I'm just gonna go over to the other one, and press that down, and there we go. Okay, so there's our beautiful window. And we're gonna take our little black piece, make sure that my texture is out a few dots here and there. Don't need a lot of glue. It's a very lightweight piece that needs just a tiny little bit of glue to stick. We'll pop it right in there. Try to get that aligned as accurately as you can. Should have a few moments to get it set before that glue really takes a hold. There we go. I'm using my dowel to get in those little corners. Perfect, we'll flip it over and apply a few little dots of glue. And we'll take our vellum, just make sure that you are getting it on top of the little cutouts and they're completely covered. There we go, we'll flip it over again, press down from the inside and there we go. Okay, so one small window. Oh, let's not forget this little piece. Flip that over, just a couple little dots of glue. And we'll put that 
can decide which side's gonna be our bottom. So when we go to install these windows, we just want to be conscious of which side this little element is in or on. Okay, so I've got mine right there. So that's gonna be the bottom, that's gonna be the top. Okay, I've got my small window here. I'm gonna start putting this off to the side for now. We're not quite ready for it yet. I got my five large windows, put those off to the side along with these overlays. Don't forget to put your little overlay on the window frame. Okay, and now we can move on to, well, let's see, what are we gonna do next? Let's put together this little guy. Okay, this is the actual um, light, uh, light room. Okay, this is where we're gonna put a little tea light in there. Okay, and this guy's pretty straightforward to put together. I've already got everything pre-folded. Now that's one thing I always recommend you do is go through and pre-fold everything uh, before you get started with me. And now you want to be pretty careful when you're folding here because the, uh, the width here from the edge to where the little window starts is pretty thin and it may, it's not difficult, you just have to be careful. And what I did, I used my little, my little scraper, you can use a bone folder or whatever it is to make those seams a little more pronounced Okay, so that it folds easier, especially, um, and I don't know if it's because of the thickness of black dye, but black paper always seems to be thicker, and I think that's probably why. Okay, now that we've got everything nice and folded, uh, this is a good time to actually apply the vellum. You wanna try to do this now while this is open and it's easy to get inside there. So we'll just do a series of little dots around the window opening and we'll pop our vellum right in there. Just make sure that you're covering a little cutout for the window completely, like so. Okay, and we'll repeat that for all of the little window openings and just make sure that you keep the vellum within the confines of the score marks so that when we go to fold this, the vellum is not preventing this from, from folding. Okay, there we go, looks good. And just kind of keep on trucking here. Go very easy with the glue here. Tiny, tiny little dots is all you really need. Like so. Just press that down. If you smudge too much glue on here, it will come back and bite you as far as spilling out into the visible area. So we don't want to do that get a little bit that spills in, it's not the end of the world, especially if it's around the perimeter. Okay, so just keep on cruising here. And I may have almost, not quite, almost obstructed its ability to fold. Okay, so now um, sometimes I try to avoid putting vellum on an end piece like this where I know we're gonna have to glue a tab to that section, but because that tab extends down here as well and we still have a little bit of surface area there, I'm not overly concerned about it, okay? So now we can take this and we're gonna close this up now. So go ahead and apply glue to the tab and I'm gonna take and spread that glue out to the very edge so I get a nice clean seam. We can put that down flat and grab the other end, just bring it over, line it up and press down and hold. And just give that a few seconds to set. And there we have it. And now before we actually glue this down and make it solid and dimensional, Let's take advantage of the fact that it's flat <clears throat> and apply our little panels. Okay, so these are gonna be flush and they're gonna match up perfectly with the little window cutouts, but there is gonna be a slight little border on either side. It's gonna be flush on top, flush on the bottom, uh, but a tiny little border along the sides. And I did hit this with a little bit of black ink just to kind of blend it better because it's a, it's a white core paper. Um, if you have a solid core and yours is black along the sides, you probably don't need to do that. Uh, but I did because I want it kind of 
I want it to blend nicely. Okay, so again, match it up with the cutout for the windows. Make sure it's flush on top. You can kind of run your finger along the top and feel. Make sure that it's nice and flush and press that down. Okay, there we go. And then you can just kind of fold it over to the next section and just repeat that process until we have all six of these panels in place. And just go easy on the glue here. Again, this is a very delicate little piece, very small. Does not need a lot of glue to stay put. Okay, match it up with the window. Make sure it's flush with the top. And press that down. And even if it's not perfectly flush on top, it's okay because the roof, this is the prototype. Okay, the roof is gonna kind of hang over, over that a little bit. So if you kind of goof up a little, it's not gonna be noticeable. But we're gonna do our best, because that's what we always do. Okay, just rotate that one. And apply our glue. Okay. Let's get that lined up. Make sure it's flush at the top. And rock and roll here. Okay. So we got three of them done. Three more to go. Oops. And to be quite honest, I'm not a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of like the tropical stuff. I think it's because I'm hot-blooded. When I get a fever, it's usually 103. I don't know if you caught that reference, but... Uh, Liesl, on the other hand, when are you going to take me somewhere warm? You always take me to cold places. <laughs> uh, found out that I think Peyton runs kind of hot too, so he definitely got my blood. Um, you know, there's just, I think there's, there's two kinds of people. Some people that can go down to Florida and still be cold when it's 95 and, you know, 80% humidity. And then there's people like me that malfunction. So I, I don't know, I don't mind the beach as long as I'm in the water. Okay, so now that we have all of the panels and the vellum in place, what we're gonna do is apply glue to these five tabs and I'm going to go a little heavy with the glue here. We're going to spread it out and I don't want it to dry prematurely. So I'm going to give it a good layer, spread that glue out. Then we're going to close this up. Okay. Now I want you to focus on aligning this edge here with this side here first. Get that nice and centered. You might need to kind of nudge and kind of push in or push out some of the sides to get it to line up correctly. But once you get this side in place, more often than not, the rest of it will kind of fall into place. And then rather than trying to stick your finger in there, grab that dowel and push down on the tabs to help it get a good grip. Check your work, make sure the seams are nice and clean. And they are, okay? All right, so that's done. We'll put that off to the side. And why not, let's just continue working on, uh, well, let's see. Let's work on the house here. Okay, so this is where our light keeper is going to live. And the light keeper's house has, it's got some elements on there that we're going to install. And the first thing we're going to do, let me get all the pieces for it, right here. Okay, so you can see here, we've got a little panel. And actually, I think, yeah, I want to keep things consistent. I maybe forgot to do this earlier. Uh, I have a little bit of a gray ink that I used on the walls of the lighthouse here that you can see. It's very subtle, 
but it helps kind of blend the edges into the main structure. So I forgot to do that on this piece. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Just kind of hit that with a little bit of ink, not a ton. Uh, you can go crazy with the ink on this if you want, because as you know, um, a lighthouse like this, it's probably gets beat up pretty, pretty good. Uh, being right next to an ocean with all the salt and the wind and the water. So you could really have some fun with the distress. Now, of course, if it's a, if it's a lighthouse that's taken care of very well, you know, they probably power wash it and clean it and paint it regularly. So it may be, may be pretty pristine, but I like to kind of muddy it up a little bit. Okay. All right. So let's begin by applying these panels to the exterior. Now, as you can see this one, uh, we're going to use the windows as a reference. It's going to be a border on the sides and the top, but it's going to be flush with the bottom. Okay. And I had a really cool embossing folder that I used for this. Uh, it has a series of very small bricks that are, I don't know if they're exactly uh, at the correct, uh, you know, size relative to the size of this, but it looks pretty good. So I went with it. Obviously you don't want to use any bricks that are like huge. I'm going to use something that kind of fits the bill as far as the sizing goes. Okay. So we've got that one in place. And now these pieces here are kind of angled. You can see how this is not completely square. So you just want to make sure that you grab the right one for the corresponding side. And we'll get that in place. We'll put our little window trim in. We'll uh, put our vellum in. Probably do that before we actually make this thing dimensional just to make it easier. I'm flipping this over so I can use my fingers here on the bottom just to feel and make sure that everything is nice and flush. And it is. Okay. Okay. On to the last little piece here, as far as the panels go. Let's get that in place. Just match it up with a little cutout for the window. So the cool thing with this is you're going to be able to light up not only the actual lighthouse light at the top, but the light keeper's house can, well, actually the whole, yeah, the whole thing lights up, <clears throat> including these little windows here. All right. So let's flip this over while we have it flat and get our vellum in place. Okay. So you can see here, we have these little windows that are shaped like this, like a little house. And those we cut specifically like that. So you, you know that they go here. And then there's one that's going to fit right over the door. Let's get that in place. And just using a little, just a few little dots, to hold that in place. You don't have to be all precise and meticulous about it. Okay. So that's what we want it to look like from the front and the door. Of course, we have this little panel it matches the little trim that we have at the top of the tower as well. So let's get that glued into place. Like so. And just match that up with the little hole where the vellum is. And also it's going to be flush with the bottom. So just use your finger to feel and make sure that it is in fact so. Okay. We have this tiny little square piece. It's going to go around the window as well, just to add a nice little decorative, colorful touch to the door. So nice and easy with the glue here, just a few little dots and just line that up as accurately as you can. Now, don't forget that a door needs a little handle. So it's a good time to break out the bling and add something from your stash uh, right about there where a typical handle would go for a door. Okay. And then this is the little window trim again, very tiny little piece. So go easy with the glue. Just a few little dots will do. And you want to line that up with the little horizontal part of the window there to get that matched up like so. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just a few little dots. 
Now we're going to build the roof for this thing, but we're not going to put it on until after we get this connected to the main structure. Okay. We can definitely get it built like this for now. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to take and apply glue to this tab here. That's closest to this side with the, the roof that actually has a tab connected to it. So go ahead and throw a little bit of glue right on there and work that glue out to the edge. Bring that under, tuck it under this piece here. That's going to act as the support for our little roof system, just like that. Okay. And then what we'll do, we're going to glue this in place like so. We can move that out of the way and let's apply glue to these two tabs. I'm going to spread the glue out here and here all the way and get that connected to this tab here first, this one along the front, and then you can get that glued to that long tab that goes down the center, just like that. There we go. Okay. Now these tabs, we're going to flare these out for now, just to get them ready. That's how we're going to take this and join it to the main structure. Okay. So that is our little innkeeper's house. Okay. All right. So we can put that off to the side that is ready uh, for later on. And let's look at the roof for that little structure. Okay. So it's made up of this piece and we have three sets of little shingles that I've inked just to kind of give them a little bit of uh, interest and dimension. Uh, but for this, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by applying glue to this long tab here. Okay. So go ahead and do that. And we're going to take this glue, spread it out to the very edge. Okay. And then grab this other half and connect it like so. Try to line that up as accurately as you can, just like that. Okay. And then we have these little rect or triangular tabs here. Let me move this out of the way. We have these little triangular tabs here. We're going to apply glue to those. It's a small little dot of glue. And you can bring this little piece down, line it up, get your thumb or yeah, my, actually it's my middle finger back there and press that up against the side piece to get that to join and hold. There we go. And then we'll go over to the other side, the other triangle, press that down, bring this down, line it up as accurately as you can and press and hold. <clears throat> there we go. All right. And we have one more little piece that's going to go on the front of this like so. And I think I may just do that. I think I have a, I have an interesting little embossing folder that I think would look good there and add a little bit of interest to it. It just occurred to me that this might look cool. So I'm going to line that up like so. Yeah, that could look cool. Just add a little texture here and there, wherever you can. Um, I pretty much embossed everything beforehand, but occasionally when inspiration strikes, you gotta go with it. Okay. So I'm just going to run that through. There we go. My favorite cuddle bug. And I'm not sure why they discontinued it, but boy, it's one of the best machines in my opinion. There we go. That looks cool. All right. So we'll hold on to that and move this out of the way. And that's going to get glued right onto the front of our little roof structure. So let's get our glue on there. Make sure you get a little bit of glue right out to the very edge of that. So it doesn't come pulling apart or pulling off. Line that up as accurately as you can and just press that into place like so. Very nice. Okay. And then, <clears throat> so obviously we've got three sections of the roof. 
We're gonna put the largest on first, then the middle size, and then the small. And we're gonna grab our dowel, and we're gonna take and kind of curl these shingles up a little bit, just to kind of give them a little bit of dimension. And once you have those, you can kind of curl the whole thing up. And actually you could probably start by curling the whole thing up and just do them all in one fell swoop, like so. Now you wanna kind of pay attention to this because this is not symmetrical. If you put it on one way like this, if you try to get it flush to the, to the front, it's gonna, be, it's gonna look like it's kind of cut away here. That means you need to flip it around the other way, okay, so that it's flush up at the front. And we're gonna apply glue to pretty much this whole thing minus down here where the shingles are. We want those to be more or less free floating. Get a little bit in that little groove there. Okay, and now I have to remember which way is the front. So I kind of rotated it a bunch of times. There we go. And just line that up as accurately as you can. There we go, press that down, make sure those shingles are more or less free floating. And as you're putting this down, just make sure that the back of this is flush. Okay, you don't want the back of it going over this main structure, you want it to be flush. If anything, the front of it is gonna kinda hang over just a tiny little bit. Okay. I want the back to be flush, otherwise it's going to prevent us from getting the house nice and pushed up against the side of the main part of the lighthouse. Okay, but that looks pretty good. If anything, I'm gonna smush that down a little bit. Okay, so that's the first layer. We'll grab the next layer, do the same thing with the shingles. Just kinda, you can also just kinda put this down on your surface and just grab all four of the shingles and just kinda pull them up a little bit, like so or if you feel more comfortable, you can kind of just start slow and just work your way up, kind of fold them up. And if you don't, if you want these to be a little more pronounced, to so grab a thinner diameter dowel, and that'll give you a little bit more of a curve. Okay, and again, take a look. There's one side that's flat and one side that's a little bit angled. The angled side's going towards the back. We want that to be flush with the front and the back. And that looks good. So let's apply our glue, keep the glue off of the little shingles on the end. Okay, let's get that lined up. I'm kind of using the peak of the roof as my initial guide for placement and then just working my way down. That looks good. There we go. And we'll do the same thing with the last section here. Now this one I may just kind of curl these individually since it's so small. Not a lot of surface to work with here. There we go. Okay, take a look at it. Find the flush or the flat side. This, this side's a tiny bit angled. So it's gonna go towards the back. And there we go, okay. And for this one here, I think we could just throw a little bit of glue in the center. And that should hold, whoops. There we go. Just pop that right into place. Again, making sure it's flush with the front and the back. And press that down. And we had a little bit of glue squeeze out through the, uh, through the score line. Never seen that before. Okay, there we go. Okay, so ultimately, once we get this positioned in there, we're gonna glue this down, and you can see what that's gonna look like. Looks really nice. Okay, so moving up, moving up here, um, we do have these, uh, these two little pieces here. This is some gold trim. It's gonna go towards the top of the lighthouse. We don't need to do anything fancy with that. Okay, this is the base for where the, uh, the actual light's gonna go. And these little tabs here are what we're gonna use to join this to the main part of the lighthouse. So we don't need to do anything with those just yet. What we wanna focus on right now is taking these little triangular tabs for each of these little sides and connecting them to their little neighbors. 
So throw a little bit of glue on each of these little triangular tabs, tuck them in, tuck them behind, line it up with the neighboring dimensional section, the wall, and press and hold that in place for a moment. Let it set. There we go. And we can move on to the next one. Again, if yours is taking much longer, and by the time I let go, mine's mostly set. If yours is still not, still not set, ease up on the glue just a tiny bit. Just need a little bit, or dab it with your finger, thin it out, make it nice and tacky. Shouldn't take more than a, a press, a squeeze, and a couple seconds, and you should be able to move right on to the next one. That's how we keep things flowing here. Okay, throwing glue on the next little triangular tab. Let me get this out of the way. Move this one into place. Push that tab up behind. Make sure it's nice and straight and lined up. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna move this giant piece out of the way for a second. Let's apply our glue to this tab now. Bring this wall in. Press that up behind the next section that I've got in this hand here. There we go. Okay, so far so good. And that just leaves this large piece here. And I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's fold these back down so they're out of the way. And we're gonna take and apply glue to this tab here. Like so. And let's tuck that. You can move this, you can actually fold this back all the way so that when you bring this in, it's not get in the way. Get that aligned as accurately as you can. And press and hold. There we go. And that just leaves one more little triangular tab right in here. And I think I can get my glue nozzle in there. Nice little dot of glue. Okay, and again, you can fold that down. So you can grab the tab with your finger and press down. I'm not gluing this to this. I just have it folded like that so I can get my finger in there. Otherwise, you're trying to go like this and work around the piece where you could just fold it down like that. Just to give you easier access to getting your finger in there, okay? All right, so now we have it mostly dimensional. We're gonna take and apply glue to these tabs here. I'm gonna go with a thicker line of glue because I don't want it to dry, and plus I wanna spread it out nicely. Spread that out to the edge. You can also kinda of dab it to get that glue nice and tacky. You're kinda of also forcing it into the paper, okay? You can put this down on your surface here. When you close this up, focus on getting it aligned with this side first. You may need to kind of pull it towards you a little bit. And you can move this out of the way so that you can get your finger in there. And then if you need to kind of nudge these walls in a little bit, that's fine, that's totally expected. Just work your way around the perimeter. If we don't get it in one fell swoop, there's always the opportunity to go in and fix it up. And move these out of the way now so I can get my finger in there and just kind of give it a squeeze all the way around. It looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the seam and make sure everything looks nice and flush and it does. I don't know if it's the humidity or what's going on but my glue is behaving very well today. Okay so there's the platform um, where everything is going to go ultimately. And there is this piece of trim here that's going to go around like so. And I guess we can do that now. I think it might be easier to do it now rather than wait till later. Okay, and now this piece, um, I have a little tip I'm going to share with you actually. Okay, so this piece here is a long strip and I did add bricks to it. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how the heck did you get bricks on here all the way through this? You, if I put it in this way, I could technically put it in twice, 
but the bricks would be going the wrong way. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, I use these for photography, uh, but when you put something in there and squeeze, it puts in a lot of pressure, okay? And especially right at this top point here. So what I did was I actually put this in here. I'm not gonna do it again, but I put it in here, lined it up how I wanted it, okay? And then I took this and I literally just squeezed the devil out of it, as Bob Ross would say. And I literally just squeezed it and that kind of acted like my embossing machine. Okay, so without the strip in there, you get it lined up how you want. And then once you, once you kind of squeeze there, you move it to the next section, give it a good squeeze. And I, I really, I held it like this and I really squeezed it. Okay, and then I would just move it a little bit, do the same thing. Pretend the piece of paper's in there. All the way left to right until everything was set, okay? And then when I got that section done, I literally just moved it over and just continued the same process. And that's how I was able to achieve that brick look on here. So anyway, very unconventional, but it worked. So I'm okay with it. All right, so now let's just put this on now. Um, so this is eight sided or no, six sided. So here's what we'll do. We'll find the two middle sections. Okay, I'm gonna put glue on the first or the two middle sections first. Okay, so I've got one and two. These are obviously have score marks to help you with uh, the folding. And I'm gonna use the scored section there, the little fold to help me with the placement using my fingers as well to feel and make sure that it's nice and flush, top and bottom. And I'm gonna hold that in place. Make sure, making sure that it's flush is gonna be very important because uh, if it's skewed at all, by the time you get to the other end of this, it may be off a little bit. Okay, so hold that in place. And now that we have the first two sections in place, I'm gonna go over here to this section, apply some glue, bring it over. Now we're just gonna do one section at a time just to make sure that we keep everything nice and flush, make sure it's nice and tight or taut. <clears throat> and hold that down for a second. And we'll go over to this side and do this section. Just apply a little glue on there. Again, making sure it's nice and nice and level, nice and taut. Use your fingers to feel it. Hold that in place. All right, now you'll notice when we get to the end here, one side has a tab, <clears throat> the other side does not. So the side with the tab is the side we wanna glue down first. And we added that little tab just in case you're off a little bit. Um, even though this is the same color as this, you will not end up with any gaps. Okay, so fold that tab over as well. There we go. Press that down. And then on this final little strip here, apply your glue all the way out to the edge and fold that into place. Okay. So now we have a nice little decorative brick element on here. And I can certainly, now that I have it in place, I feel like I wanna kind of muddy it up a little bit more. Just because I feel like there's gonna be, I don't know if you've ever walked around a graveyard, <laughs> which is something I like to do. I know it sounds kind of macabre, but you know, it makes you think about things. Uh, but you'll notice that the tops of tombstones typically have the most you know, erosion and just uh, interesting stuff going on. So I'm gonna hit just the top of that with a little bit of gray or black ink, just to distress it a little bit. Okay, so that's ready to go. Again, we're gonna leave these tabs alone for now. And we gotta create the little fenced in area for where the light's gonna go. Uh, with this again, similar to uh, folding this, when you fold this, especially this part here where the tab is, just be very careful and then take your bone folder or in my case, I'm using a little scraper and just press down on that tab to help make that fold uh, more pronounced so that it moves a lot easier for us, okay? Because all we're gonna do next is apply glue to this little L shape, bring the next section of the fence in, line it up and press and hold and that should take no more than a few seconds for each of these sections. 
as long as you're sparse with the glue. Okay, moving on to the next one here. Nice and easy on the glue. Tuck that behind. Grab the bottom of the L. And give that a press. Okay, moving right along. Next little section, tuck that behind, line it up, and press and hold. There we go. A couple more to go. There we go. Okay, two more. And then I'm, I'm kind of tempted to glue this to this base, but I think I'm gonna wait until we're ready just to start assembling everything and piecing everything together. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm a big fan of going through and assembling all the little pieces to eliminate all the little pieces so that we're left with larger put together pieces and then ultimately just build the main end result. And I think that just helps the workflow make more sense. Okay, last little L. Tuck that behind the fence on this side. Make sure it's nice and lined up. And press and hold. And there we go. Okay. All right, so that, again, this is gonna, this is actually gonna get glued flush to this, like so. And then this is gonna go here. Uh, we still haven't built it yet, but we will. And that's going to go on top like that. This is a prototype. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side. And as you can see, all these, well, maybe you can't. You can see it from this angle. All these little pieces are starting to come together here. Okay, so we have one more little roof to put together. All right, so we have this little strip here. Uh, this strip is what we're going to use to create a little lip. It's going to help the roof actually sit in place properly. So just make sure you fold at the score marks. There's one little tab at the end. Let's apply some glue to that tab. Like so. Grab the other end, line it up, and press and hold. Now because again, this is a symmetrical piece, once you kind of get it into place, you can put this down flat, and then just kind of give it a little bit of an adjustment if you need to to get that to be nice and straight. That looks good. Okay, and there's our little, our little lip. Put that off to the side. We'll need that in just a moment. Okay, we have this piece here. I forgot to fold these and that's okay. We'll do that real quick. So yeah, we saw some, we saw some lighthouses um, that were made from, uh, well, SVGs, I guess you could say. And I think this one's gonna be probably the most detailed. Okay, so here are all the roof panels, as you can see. Uh, just like on the little entrance or the little house, uh, there's three layers, and it's gonna go from largest to smallest, six pieces for each layer. And we do want to take and curl these shingles as we apply them, there's six there, and then we have six more here, okay? And so with the largest one here, I think I'm probably gonna use the same dowel for, and actually I think we can just take this and do it like that. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, so let's take this, place, uh, place the dowel, or actually place the shingle between your finger and the dowel and then lift it up about 90 degrees, just right about where the shingles start, and then just run the dowel through. Okay, if it's not, yeah, that's, that's giving it a good enough curve. I'm happy with that. I'm not sure that that method is gonna work with the medium or small sized shingles, but it definitely works for this one, so I'm gonna go with it. And of course, I inked wherever I could on this project. Sometimes you run into some pieces that are just too small, and almost not worth the effort as far as inking, but for the most part, 
try to ink as much as I can. Okay, let me find, find a smaller dowel here. I think that's one, probably the smallest I have without turning into a hibachi stick. I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna pinch this one between my finger and the dowel and just curl it back. So you can see there, just take it, pinch it, and then just literally curl it up against the dowel like so. Okay. Just like that. There we go. And for the last little layer there, the small, smallest layer of shingles, I could probably use <clears throat> a hibachi stick for that, just to get that to curl a little bit. So the same process, except we have a, uh, a smaller or thinner diameter of a dowel. In this case, it's not really a dowel. It's, uh, well, actually this might be, I don't know what that is. Maybe it is a dowel. It's definitely, maybe a hibachi stick. Same difference. Just take that and curl it up just to give it a little bit of interest so it's not so flat. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do with this roof piece because we do have a tiny little triangular tab here. Um, what I want you to do is actually put glue on both the small triangular tab and the larger tab. Okay, it doesn't need to be perfect here. I don't, I'm not worried about getting it all nice and seamless because we're gonna be covering it up with those little shingles. Okay, let's get, let's get the large part of it lined up all the way down to the bottom, make sure it matches up correctly. And you'll notice that this little small section that you thought was gonna be impossible to get to just sort of naturally falls into place. And then you can flip it around and press down on the little tab from the inside. So it really makes it a whole heck of a lot easier. Uh, we're not, we don't even need to get our finger up there. We're gonna put our glue on there. Then we'll put glue on the large tab. We'll move this piece out of the way. Bring this down. And again, line up. Whoops, I gotta get that back there. Line up the long part as accurately as you can. And I'm kind of pushing it up as I press down and that's forcing that small section into place and then I can go in from the inside and push that tab down real quick. That tab almost isn't really even doing anything. It is, but it isn't. Okay, next here again. Is there glue on that one? Oh, I must have, must have started glue on that one on accident. Okay, same thing here. A tiny little dot of glue on that small triangular tab Nice amount of glue on the large one. Line up the large one while you're pushing this in. And just keep pushing it as far as it'll go while you're getting this lined up. Okay, and that naturally just falls into place. Then we can flip it around and like I said, take your little dowel and just push against that triangular tab to get that in place. Don't even need to get your finger in there. So that's that worked out beautifully. Okay, a little bit of glue there on the small one. Nice amount on the large one. Bring that down. Grabbing here, I'm kind of pushing it in and lining up the large section, making sure it's nice and aligned all the way out to the bottom. And you can see that that small section naturally falls into place. Give that a press, let's flip it around. And just a quick little nudge on that triangular tab, voila. Okay, now this last part where we go to close it up, I want to, be, I want to make sure that we keep these these tabs on this side inside <clears throat> while we glue this one down. Otherwise, I might have to rip this thing apart a little bit to force it back in. So I've got glue on the small tab, glue on the large tab, keep these tabs in, bring it down, and just like we've been doing, let's match up the large piece. There we go. That small section sort of naturally takes its shape Flip her over, we can push down on that little tab. There we go. And now finally, we have the last two little tabs here and we're gonna have to apply glue from the inside, which is fine. Throw a little bit of glue there, a little bit on that triangular tab. Let's match this up. And again, I'm sort of 
taking and as I match this up, I'm using my finger and I'm kind of pushing it up to help that get its or take its natural shape there. And there we go. That worked. Let's check that little tab and just press that down into place. Every little bit helps. And there we go. Beautiful. Came out perfect. Who would have thought? Okay. All right. So now we're going to close this down like this. Okay. And what we need to do is we need to glue this to this and that's going to create the little lip. And actually I'm going to flip this around the other way. I want my texture side out. So let me flip these little tabs the other way. And it might actually be a good idea to glue this thing in place first. So let's do that while this is flat and we'll just make it easier. Okay. So with this piece here, I've got my texture side and I've got the tabs up where the, I can see the texture on the same side as the texture. This little strip here, what we're going to do is we're going to put it on top of this piece with the tabs inside. You may have to kind of jiggle it around a little bit to get that in there like so. Okay. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to start off on just one side, bring the tab down and this doesn't need to be all pristine and precise. Just take that tab and press it up against the side of the little strip. Make sure the strip is all the way down and flush with this structure here and press it into place like so. And then we'll go over to the other side. Make sure it's nice and flush up against the surface. Bring that tab down. Just throw a few little dots of glue on there and press it up against the side. Again, making sure that the top of this is flush with this surface here and just hold that in place and then just pick another side here I'm using my table to my advantage here I'll press that into place like so then we'll go over to the other side opposite of the side we just finished throw a little bit of glue on there press that into place so, and that just leaves two more and we can just kind of do both of these together. Like that, like that. I'm going to press that up against the inside. Again, making sure that's nice and flush against the surface. And there we go. Okay. So this little lip is what's going to keep the roof in place on this structure here. So it doesn't come flying off. All right. So now it's just a matter of getting this glued to this piece here. And we're going to start off by anchoring it to just one side. So pick a side, any side. I'm going to go with this one here. Spread that glue out to the very edge. We'll grab this piece. Whoops. And get that nice and centered and flush right out to the very edge of the roof. And just press that down. I'm just holding it like this and that's fine. Okay. So you can see how that tab looks inside there. And now we're just going to close it up like that. Okay. So let's bring that out of the way for now. Let me clean off the tip of this thing. It's getting kind of gunky. And a little bit of a thicker line here because I'm going to spread this out. I don't want it to dry out too quick. I'm going to just dab this out to the edge. It's also going to help get the glue nice and tacky so that maybe just maybe we can get it in one fell swoop here. There we go. All right. And just like before, bring this down, focus on getting it lined up with the side opposite of where it's already hinged and press that down and then work your way around the rest of the perimeter. Just like that. If you need to kind of scooch things in a little bit, that's fine. And then you should be able to kind of get your finger in there a little bit to push down on the rest of that tab from the inside. Don't squeeze too hard because you might end up pulling it apart in other sections. You can actually kind of squeeze down like that a little bit. I wouldn't do it too much though. And that turned out perfect. Okay. So you can see how that looks. And now it's just a matter of putting our shingles in place. Okay. 
So we're gonna start off with the largest one and it's gonna go right on here like so. We're gonna take the very tip of this and butt it up to the little fold right before it starts going vertical. Okay, we wanna make sure we get it nice and centered. We'll do that six times and then we'll repeat with the next smallest size and then finally the smallest size until we have the three layered roof all in place. And I'm just gonna leave this on my surface on my table here. Again, just bump that up right up to that fold where the sloped part of the roof meets the vertical part. Okay, that looks good. Grab our next one, apply glue. Make sure you get that glue all the way up to the very top here like that. If you need to spread it with your fingers, that's fine too. And get that nice and centered. Put it up right up to that little score mark. All right, moving right along. I think this is the last part of um, just the, I guess the assembly of the smaller pieces. Now there are some bases that we're gonna construct after we actually get the lighthouse put together, uh, but that's not really a little tedious stuff like this. It's more larger stuff. Okay, moving right along here. I've got three more to go as far as the large pieces go. And you can pretty much stop applying glue right where the curve starts on this. So wherever, wherever your curve starts, and that's gonna be dependent on the diameter of the dowel that you used, it's pretty much where you wanna stop applying your glue. Because obviously if it's not making contact with the surface, there's really no point in wasting your glue. Okay. Few more to go here, and then we'll just again repeat with the next size until we have all of our little shingles installed. Boy, if uh, if, if if this is how, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if I could apply my knowledge of paper crafting to improving my house, which I could probably do in some ways, but I wish it was just as easy as getting my cricket out, cutting out some shingles and going up on my roof and just gluing them down. I guess in, in some sense it's very similar, but okay, here we go. Okay, so the first layer is in place. Uh, next layer, it's gonna be the same thing. We're actually gonna take this and use the same little point here up at the top. Okay, so that's just gonna go right on top and the edge of this is gonna terminate right where the previous one terminated, okay? So not much difference there. Go easy with the glue, pretty much stop putting it on where your shingle starts to curve. And just pop that right on top of the previous layer, like so. Okay, moving on to the next one here. And just line that up as accurately as you can. Now, when I when I inked the the shingles here, uh, obviously I didn't spend much time inking up here because you're not going to see that because the next layer is going to be covering it up. Okay, so you don't need to over ink things. You want to be strategic with your inking so you're not one wasting ink, but most importantly, two, you're not wasting time. There we go. That's really starting to come together. I love seeing all these little pieces come together to create that end result that we're all anticipating. So I mentioned uh, mentioned in the, the group <clears throat> as well as maybe in some previous videos uh, now, baby Peyton is now six months old. Imagine that. It's already been six months. He's uh, on the verge of crawling. He's a little dinosaur. He's a raptor. He's got a lot of personality. And, uh, boy, it's, it's hard to imagine that it won't be long before he starts talking, which blows my mind. Okay, so the first two layers are in place. And now the final layer, same thing. We're just going to terminate that at the same spot 
that we terminated the last two right at where the roof starts to go vertical. Okay, just gonna match that up just like we've been doing. But boy, he really is, uh, really changed my, changed my world a lot, I'll tell you that. I see things much differently now, which I guess is a good thing. Definitely a good thing. I don't guess it is. It definitely is. Uh, kind of feel like I'm gonna miss miss the baby stage. Maybe that's why people just keep having babies, huh? <laughs> it's easy to say now uh, because Liesl's home now. Um, last week was her last day, and because she works nights, it literally takes her. You know, yeah. Well, she's been working nights as a nurse for as long as I've known her, and even before that. So needless to say, her sleep schedule, her circadian rhythm is off more than anyone I know. Uh, I think she's just finally starting to get used to not being a vampire. Um, and it has really really created a less stressful environment at home because no one's tired now. Everyone's getting good sleep. Like I just, I just went inside uh, to get a drink and, you know, just been doing stuff around the house and the baby took a nap. She's napping with them. So I couldn't be happier. It really just kind of creates a less stressful home life because I'm always here. You know, I work, I work from, I have a detached studio, so I can disappear and I don't you know, have to hear everything that goes on in the house, but um, being on the property at all times can be kind of stressful because, well, I'm sure you can imagine. But there's the beautiful roof and it's gonna go on like so, beautiful. Okay, so that's ready to go. All right, so uh, first thing I wanna do here is we've got two main sections for the lighthouse. I wanna get these two sides connected. Okay, so let me flip it over this way so you can kind of see how it works. We're gonna join these two sections together at this tab. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, and then we'll start putting some windows in. We gotta do that first. I don't wanna to try to put these windows in after this thing is dimensional because that will just be a huge headache. I'm gonna to try to keep this as as friendly as possible from an assembly standpoint and we tend to tend to accomplish that more often than not okay so grab the other half line it up make sure it's nice and flush at the bottom lined up correctly down the middle and flush at the top perfect let's press that down give that a chance to set for just a few moments at least. Yeah, I think this is probably the most involved project from our latest bundle. Just a lot of little details, but of course, what would it be without all the details? It, it wouldn't be Dreaming Tree, I'll tell you that. Okay, all right, so again, before we close it up, here is how this is gonna work. So. We're gonna take and again, remember, we have one small window and five large windows. The small window is gonna go on top here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually fold these tabs inward like this and we're gonna pop them through like this and we're gonna take and glue the tabs to the face of our structure like that, okay? And then we're gonna put a panel over it so it'll cover up these little tabs. So let's start Start with one tab here. I'll just throw a little bit of glue on this top tab, bring it up, press it against the face of this. Try to get that as flush as possible. There we go. And we'll go down to the bottom. Oh, also make sure that this is in fact the bottom. Remember that little piece that we put there that you probably embossed and maybe did some inking on? Make sure it's at the bottom. Okay, otherwise that was all for nothing. There we go. And then we'll take these two tabs, bring them in, apply a little bit of glue on each of them, bring them over. And you can actually take and just 
make sure the tabs are flat and you can push from the inside to really keep this thing nice and flat. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. So window number one is in. And again, the last five, did I put, yeah, I did. Okay. I almost thought I didn't put, I thought one, one of the windows was not done, but it is. Okay. So just like we did with the small one, take those tabs, bring them in and then flare them out once they're through like that. Okay. And I'm going to go and apply glue to this bottom one. Make sure that that little piece is at the bottom, not the top. Throw a little bit of glue on there. And then you can flip that down on your surface and press down. There you go. And you know what? I think at this point, I'm going to press down on the top tab first, but I think we can put glue on all three of these just to kind of speed things up a little bit. Flare those out, put that down on your surface. Make sure the tabs are in fact flat. Push down on the top first and then on the sides. Oh, look at that. That looks great. All right. So we're going to repeat that process until all five of our windows are in place, which is nice and easy. Okay. Again, make sure that the bottom is the bottom. It's that little section where we put that little piece. Okay. Bring those tabs up and through. Throw a little bit of glue on there. Let's just get that first one anchored. And then we can do the other three in one fell swoop. So I'm not exactly going to any coastal areas, but we are getting really close to our our little annual summer getaway to the north woods of Wisconsin. I'm really looking forward to doing some fishing. It's been the last time we went was in October and that is my happy place. I'd love to live up there permanently one day. Maybe not during the winter though. They have the worst winters ever. Sometimes you, you look at the rentals up there and you look at the pictures that they have of some of the rentals and the winters just look brutal. A lot of people like to go up there um, for snowmobiling, ice fishing. They do a lot of weird stuff up there. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't know. It's not too bad. I guess I could do it. That's, you know, come December, January, those are the times where I'd rather go to a, a tropical place where it's not as hot down there. It's 80 degrees maybe. You know, mid eighties is probably pushing it, maybe not pushing it, but, um, probably ideal once you get into like the nineties and you've got a lot of humidity, no thanks. And I'm sure I know I, I have some fans, some dreamers some customers down in Florida who tell me that, you know, their, their summers are basically like our winters. A lot of people just stay inside in the air conditioning because <clears throat> it's just oppressive outside. Okay, so there we go. A couple more to go. And then we're gonna put our panels, maybe yeah, we're gonna put our panels in place while this thing's flat, even though we really can't push down on them. That's okay. And again, just making sure that the bottom is the, the section where we put that little, that little additional piece. Okay, let me get this glued down. So lately in my spare time, and you guys are gonna think I'm a nerd, but this is what I do. I'm learning about biology and just the overall habits of walleye. <laughs> I think that maybe my next calling is uh, something to do with fishing and being out in the water. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so those three tabs, make sure that they're flared out enough so that when we put it down on our surface, they are in fact making contact with 
the face of our lighthouse. Looks good. We've got one more to go. Okay, so the last one is going in. And there we go. Let's get that top one anchored first. Flip it over. And anchor down the remaining three tabs. There we go. Flare those out. Flip it over. And just take advantage of your surface. Why not? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start applying the panels here. And I'm going to start on just one side and just get those in place. Uh, now, depending on, as I mentioned, depending on whether or not you use an embossing folder, uh, like I, I use an embossing folder on this and I can tell that it has altered the length of this piece of paper. Okay, now by design, it should be flush at the top and flush at the bottom. Okay, and they should have a little bit of a border on the left and right. And what I'm noticing on this one is that I kind of stretched the paper a little bit. And that's okay. I'll work with it. And it's not going to make or break the project. Uh, once we get that panel in place, we can flip it over and push down from the other side so that we don't destroy the windows. And that'll help it really get a good grip throughout. Okay, so that looks fantastic. Look at that. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna go over to this side here and let's take a look here on this one. Pretty much flush at the top. And again, with this one, it looks like it kind of, we shrunk the paper a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to verify that actually while I'm doing this, I'll have the team take a look at the panels in our software. Cause I remember before I embossed, I kind of had them all on top of each other. And from what I remember, they were all the same size. And again, this is not going to be the first time that I've experienced this sort of thing happen where an embossing folder sort of alters the shape of not the shape, but the length of a piece of paper. So if you're experiencing that as well, just go with the flow. It happens. Okay. All right. So that's looking sharp. Let's go on to the next one here. I'll grab this guy. That one's going to go there and let's see what our embossing did to this one. Okay. So it looks like for the most part, eh, for the most part, it did all right. You can tell that it did slightly just warp the length of the paper, and that's okay. It's not gonna not gonna make or break the project, but just be aware that 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 can happen. This is a, you know paper is very it's a very uh, malleable sort of breathing material that is just made up of a bunch of fibers that are kind of weaved together, and they have a tendency to well breathe, I guess you can say. So don't worry about that. That's just part of the territory, I guess. All right, just make sure you've got that nice even border on both sides, flip it over, press down from the inside. Great. Moving on now, grab this piece here for this window and then let's see what happened there. And this one looks like it's flush on the bottom, maybe slightly off on top, but that's okay. All right, let's get our glue going here. And now with the embossing on this, this is like debossed 
Actually, it's debossed on the other side. This is embossed on this side. So not all of the surface is going to actually make contact with the main structure, but we've got enough glue on there where it will it'll hold. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, just line that up with the hole for the window. Make sure you have a nice even border on both sides. There we go. I'll flip it over and press down. There we go. Looks good. Okay. We're going on to this one now. And then once we have these in place, now see this one looks pretty good too. Once we have these in place, we'll put the trim on the windows and then we'll close it up and we'll start building the little top part of our lighthouse. And again, if you're um, what may maybe a little more safe to do, rather than embossing like I did, if you find a paper that already has like a brick texture on it, you can use that too. I really love the embossing, uh, mostly because when I go to photograph all this stuff, it really plays with the light nicely and just makes things look awesome. So, and I mean, that's true in, you know, in still life at home when you're using this as a decorative piece too. So I'm not saying don't emboss, but um, there's other ways to do it. Okay, all right, so this just leaves the last part here. Now I left this one for last because this little part here at the bottom is a little more challenging to glue down. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom just to make sure that I get this glued down correctly. And I'm just gonna put glue on just that bottom section first, and then I'll peel it back and glue the rest of it afterwards. Just wanna line that up. Now see, I can see there that it definitely stretched it. Yeah, and I just got confirmation from Diana. She checked the file and of course, everything is perfect in our design software as far as the sizing goes. So it definitely stretched it in some parts and I don't know how it could, I guess it could shrink it too. So because of that, I have a little excess here at the bottom. I'm just gonna snip that off. Okay, and this is where the house is gonna go. I want that to sit flat. Anyway, okay. So that looks good. And then I'll just peel this back now and apply my glue to the rest of this. And we'll get that nice and anchored in place. Peel this back as far as I can go without creasing it. There we go. <clears throat> that looks good. And that should just kind of naturally fall into place. Flip it over and press down. And there we go. Look at that. That is starting to look really cool. Okay. All right. So now. Uh, we have the little trim pieces. Now remember, there's one that's a little bit smaller and that's for this window here. Okay, so it's gonna go on like that. So let's just start getting these glued into place. And then we can start making this thing dimensional. So just go easy with the glue on these trim pieces. Luckily, in my case, I've got a white lighthouse. So if I do have a little bit of glue that escapes me, it will be rather forgiving. There we go. I'll flip that over again. Push down from the inside. And there's our beautiful little trim. And we're gonna repeat that process five more times. up, flip her over, press down, 
from the inside. Beautiful. Okay. And I was considering embossing the little window trim parts, but I feel like there's already so much going on that maybe it wasn't necessary. And then I thought about how nice trim on a house looks when it's freshly painted. So I think I was like, well, I'm just going to go with, I'm just going to go with that. It was a nice freshly painted window trim. Could have maybe done something to distress it or you know what I mean. Sometimes less is more too. I don't need to overdo it. There we go. That's good. All right, two more to go. And then this thing's gonna start taking shape. Yeah, and I've, I, can't, I can't even count the number of times this has been recommended or requested, I should say. I, I almost feel like uh, <laughs> the number of times it was requested could almost sustain this company for an entire year. I'm obviously, that's sarcasm, but um, it's been requested a lot. So hopefully we did it justice and you guys are happy with the overall design and Hopefully it's unique enough and better than anything that's out there, which I, you know, I looked around and I try not to recreate things that have already been created by other companies in the SVG world. But oftentimes I look at something and I'm like, well, we could do that better. And if that sounds cocky, then so be it. Cause it's true. Cause no one, no one spends the time on the detail like we do. Okay. So there we go. All right, cool. So that is coming together. And now at this point, what we can do is we can close this up. So we're going to do that by applying glue to this tab now. And let's get that going. I kind of like to do it from this angle because I know I'm going to spread that glue out anyway. So I'm going to go a little bit thicker on the glue here since I'm going to spread it out. I don't want it to dry out on me, try to cover that entire tab if possible, or at least most of it, definitely out to the edge. Okay. Now we can't put this down flat like in other situations. So we have to do this kind of in mid air and that's okay. This thing's nice and stiff now because we've added all those panels nice and strong. Give the top and bottom a good pinch. Make sure those are making good contact, wipe off any excess, and then work your way in through the middle and very gently start pushing that. And you can actually, you know what? You can actually kind of put that down on your surface as long as it's just on that corner and you can push that down. Let's take a look at that. There we go. Look at that baby. Looking good. Okay. All right. So next up, what we need to do, uh, let's yeah, let's work on the top here. So this piece that we finished earlier, we're gonna poke those tabs through the top, okay? And we're gonna take and we're gonna glue those tabs to the inside walls all the way down in there. So yeah, you're gonna have to get your hands in there, okay? And it may seem difficult, but we're only doing one tab at a time. So just do your best. And I'm just kind of getting a feel for it first. And that looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to suggest you do uh, in order for this to work is actually apply a good amount of glue on each of these tabs, okay, because it's going to be very difficult to get your glue in there. There's still a way to do it, and I may have to do it, um, but I'm going to try to avoid it. Okay, so get those tabs, get some glue on those tabs. Pop it into place and just grab one of the tabs, any one, doesn't matter, and pull it down towards you a little bit and push it up against the side here. I've got this tab here. You're not going to be able to see it, obviously. I can't get a camera in there. But press and hold that up against the side until it grabs. Okay. 
And then we're going to go over to the side opposite of that side, which is over here. We're going to get our hand in there. And we're going to grab that tab and pull that down, make it nice and flush and centered, and hold that down. And once we get that one, then you can kind of feel, I'm going to pull my hand out and pop it back in, grab another tab, and press that up against the side. And then I'm going to go over opposite, grab the next tab. You might have to kind of change the angle of your hand a little bit to get it in there. Press that down. And if you can't get your hand in there, just grab a dowel and press down with the dowel. Push down here, make sure that it's nice and flush, and just use that dowel to push the tab down against the side. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just need it to just need it to be in there and be glued to the side. And there you have it. Okay, so that wasn't that bad at all, actually. All right, cool. All right, so now that we have that. We can take this piece, and this piece is going to get glued right onto this. It should be pretty flush. Um, actually, it will be exactly flush, and you should that little strip that we put around there should be kind of just literally one paper width outside of um, where this ends. So what we're going to do here is we're going to flip this over, and I'm going to apply glue. I'm not overly concerned about getting glue in the center, uh, but I'm going to do a little bit of a thicker line around the perimeter and I'm going to spread that glue out to the very edge because I want it to look nice and seamless when we join it to the top of the tower of the lighthouse. And we may need to just kind of hold it in place <clears throat> for a few extra seconds. Okay, so just line that up nice and centered. Okay, take a look and make sure it's making good contact all the way around. And then just keep pressing that down. I would almost just put your whole hand on there and maybe hold right here at the bottom of the top of the tower here. And just, I'm pushing up with this hand, my left hand, and I'm pushing down with my right hand. And we continue to do that until it's making good contact there. Okay, and I think that that pretty much does it. All right, so next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy now and we're gonna glue this right to the center. I'm gonna stand up and do this because I kinda need a, an eagle eye view of this just to make sure that I do in fact get it as centered as possible. So just like we did with that little tower, I'm gonna take and put a little bit of glue in the center, focus the glue around the perimeter and spread that glue out to the edge. There we go. Nice and easy. Went a little heavy with the glue there, but that's okay. All right. And this is a symmetrical piece, so it doesn't matter which side's which. Just make sure you get it right in the center there. Should have a nice even border all the way around. Make sure it's lined up correctly. Okay, and then take a look at it from the side and make sure that it looks good there. And you can kind of push down on it very gently. Rotate it. See how that looks. That looks great. Let's put the top on. Okay, look at that. That is looking sharp. <clears throat> All right, uh, a couple more things to do with the lighthouse itself. Of course, remember we have this little entrance let me take this off for a second. I don't want that to get ruined. Okay, so this guy here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop him in right to that little slot. And then we're gonna take in those four tabs are gonna get glued to the inside of the body of our lighthouse. Okay, so that should be pretty solid at this point. So you're gonna put glue on this part of the tab. And I'm gonna put glue on this tab and this tab first. Okay. So let's slide that in. Make sure it is in there as far as it'll go. Nice and flush. And just press that to the side. And press those tabs in place. I'm gonna try to show you that. Pushing these tabs right in place here. Okay, and check it and make sure that it sits flat. 
Okay, and that just leaves <clears throat> oh, I have one little tab that was not making full contact there. Let me make sure that's all taken care of before I move on here. And then we just have these two tabs at the top here, these two. We're going to apply glue to those tabs like that, and then just flip them up against the inside of our lighthouse. Okay, there we go. And there we have it. Perfect. Okay, look at that. Beautiful. All right, so now all that's left to do is put our little roof in place. And you can see why I waited until the end to do that. Just because now when we can actually push it up against there, it'll make it look nice and seamless. So let's go ahead and apply our glue to this part of the roof. A little bit on top. came undone. Don't need to give you guys a peep show. All right. And then go ahead and just match that up with the pitch of the roof or the peak and push it back as far as it'll go. If you want to, you can kind of put your hand back there just to support it while you push back. And once it's as far as it'll go back, just press down so it's making full contact with the structural part of the roof. And there we go. Now, one thing that I'm going to add to this is a little pearl. I might just do a gold one. We'll see. Just to kind of give it a little finial at the top. Uh, might paint that red. We'll see. But that's that's it for the lighthouse. Okay, and that looks really sharp. Very cool. So now it's just a matter of making a base for it. And then we have a larger base that we created to kind of set a scene for it. Um, I have a few decorative elements that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, but you could go, you can go all out and decorate it however you'd like. Uh, but that turned out pretty awesome. It looks very real, actually. Okay, well, I got a little ahead of myself here. Uh, I forgot that we had this little gold trim to add to the lighthouse. And on this panel here, uh, my decorative panel, there are a series of little score marks, and you're going to use the score mark. The, uh, you're going to align this with the bottom of the score mark, and this is going to go across uh, this section here. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do, I'm going to grab the piece that contains the uh, little tabs, and we're going to begin by applying glue to the piece in the center. So, okay, and I'm going to do this right on the front and get that lined up with that section there. You want the bottom of this trim to sit right on that little score mark. Okay, now this is going to be a little tough for me because I embossed this. So just be patient with this first section. Okay, and let's take a look and see how the rest of it will sit. Looks pretty good. Just make sure that's nice and straight. Okay, looks good. Looks like it's holding pretty well. I'm going to fold this back and apply glue to this strip here all the way down to the tab. Okay. And fold that over. Look at those, use those little score marks to help you with the placement. And then also, you know what, because I embossed this, I actually probably should do this visually just to make sure it looks straight. Okay, and press that down. Make sure it's making full contact with the side of that. Okay, mine is. Let's take a look and see how that looks. Looks pretty good. I would feel a lot more confident with this right now if I knew that my embossing didn't uh, warp my, my paper a little bit, but that's okay. It's still gonna look good. No one's gonna notice. That's what I like to think anyway. All right, and then let's put some glue on this piece here all the way down to the tab. Bring that over and my my markers are pretty much, pretty
pretty much spot on, but again, I'm not, I can't really trust them fully right now because I know what my embossing folder did to that panel. So I'm just gonna have to eyeball it mostly, which I hope doesn't bite me later. Okay, holding that tab down, making sure that's making good contact. And so far that looks pretty good. Looks pretty, pretty right on. Okay, so now we're gonna grab this piece here. And just like we did with the front, uh, let's see, where's the marker? There's the marker, I see it. Okay, let's take a look and see if it meets up correctly, and it does. Okay, so it wasn't too bad, it wasn't that far off. Okay, so for this one here, just like we did on the front, we're gonna start with the middle, and we'll get that anchored first. Now while you're anchoring this, um, again, use that little marker to help you with the placement. The bottom of this piece should be sitting right on that marker. Okay, and then before you commit, just make sure that it matches up. And you know what, this piece actually will have a little bit of give on those two end pieces. You can kind of move it up and down just a tiny bit. I'm gonna stick my hand in there so I can really push down on it. Take a look and see, it looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good, that'll work. It's got a little bit of give. So if you need to kind of change the angle of it to help it meet, you can do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here and get that lined up as accurately as I can. It's a little bit off, not horribly. There we go. And a little bit of glue squirt out of that score mark. Probably should have used solid score marks on this, but that's okay. There we go. Let's peel that back. Last little section. And glue that down right over that tab. And again, kind of using my eyeballs here to make sure that it's nice and level because I really can't trust those markers. There we go. Okay. And that, that'll work. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, in between takes here, uh, I had this, I had a pink pearl. I just put it on a little hibachi stick, grabbed a little brush and some red paint, and just kind of trying to match it. Actually, just the red paint that I had, whatever that color was pretty much matches with the roof. And I'm gonna glue that to the top of the roof. And then for the, for the handle on the door, I'm gonna go with a little gold, uh, you know, a, girl, a gold pearl. <laughs> I don't know why that was a tongue twister, but I'll let that dry. I'm gonna hot glue that to the top for the finial. And now I'm just gonna work on the base. I'm gonna put this off to the side for now. That looks great. Um, so we have, um, well, a couple things we got to work on here. Now, one thing I want to talk about before we get into creating the actual bases are these two pieces that are going to cut out for you. Now, again, these are optional. You don't have to make the large base, which I'll show you in a little bit, uh, but the standard base that uh, the lighthouse sits on, you are going to create. You're going to have this little template piece with the number one etched into it, and that just means that you need to cut this out once. Okay, so I believe this is 3 16th inch thick um, foam core, and you're gonna put it on your foam car, foam core, and I literally just traced around it, and then using an X-Acto, um, got this X-Acto here, and I gotta give a shout out to Dreamer Gloria. Gloria sent me a, a goodie box of all sorts of fun things, because. She saw that I was just using a razor blade. I have, uh, I have an X-Acto, it's kind of dull, and I have a box cutter, but it's in the garage, and sometimes I just grab a razor blade and uh, hope I don't slice myself, but she sent me this really cool DeWalt box cutter uh, with a nice sharp blade. So I'm gonna cut one of these out that we definitely need. And then here's another template for the larger base that is optional, but definitely cool, something you can make. I'm gonna show you how that goes together here in just a moment. But for now, let's start with this base, okay? So what we're gonna do, and there's like two tiers to this, okay?
Okay, here's the first tier. We're gonna need these two pieces. And um, there's two, there's like two sections, or two different sets, I should say, of pieces that look like this, okay? And you'll notice that the thickness on this one, uh, these are the tabs, so this is the thickness of the actual wall, uh, is just that thick. And then this one here only has one set of tabs. And also, I forgot to mention, this has a little R on it. So does this, okay, and so does this. This has a little R. Okay, so all three of these are gonna go together. They all have an R on them. This has a B on it, and this is the same size as this, obviously. And then you'll notice on this, I believe somewhere, is a little B. Yep, there's a B etched into that as well, okay? So these go together, the ones with the B. And then this one doesn't have anything on it, but uh, it's the same size as this one, so you know it goes together. All right, so what this is, is the wall for the base, okay? And what we wanna do is we want to keep the tabs that have the little B etched into it on the same side. So the B is there, and then the B is here. So you don't want it this way, because that's actually not gonna work, because then you have two of these triangular tabs facing each other, you don't want that. You want the triangular tabs facing away from each other. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, first off, we're gonna connect these two sections together using this triangular tab here. Okay, so just throw a little bit of glue on there, grab this other piece, pop it right next to it, make sure it's nice and aligned, and just press that down into place. And then you can fold it over onto itself because these, uh, these little tabs here, they should right here be at the same angle. And just press and hold that in place. Okay. There we go, just like that. So we've made it one long strip, all right? Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to now close it up. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on this little triangle now. And just join those two sections together and just hold that in place like so. There we go. All right, give that a few seconds and then what we can start doing is folding these tabs down, like so. And ultimately, these two pieces are exactly the same. Um, you'll notice that we have a, a series of little markers here and that's to help us put the next section on it. But for now, what we need to do is figure out how this is shaped. You'll notice that there's these two little triangles here and those are gonna match up with this. So that's gonna help us kind of figure out the shape of this. Okay, so this is gonna be the front, and that's the side, and then that's gonna go like that. Okay, and then we have the little shape there. Okay, so it's like that. Let's see how that works, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do actually is instead of using this piece with the little B on it, I'm gonna use this piece. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna anchor this to this large piece in the back first. So let's do that. Let's throw a little bit of glue on this large piece. Spread that glue out. Okay, and we're gonna take this piece and just get that nice and centered right on there, right out to the very edge, nice and centered. And just hold that in place for a moment, right out to the edge. And once that has a hold, drop it down and press down from the inside to help the rest of that grab. Okay. And now it's just a matter of going around and connecting the rest of this into place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually move these tabs out of the way because we may need to work from the inside here because there's a lot of stuff going on here. And based on the shape, I don't think we're gonna be able to do this all in one fell swoop. So I'm just gonna do section by section. Spread that glue out, okay. And we'll tuck that in right here, line it up. Get that lined up as accurately as you can. You can put that down on your surface now. Press down, 
just like that. That looks good. And I still have some wiggle room here where we can pull this out and apply our glue and then pop it back in. There's going to come a point now where we won't be able to do that and we'll have to apply the glue from the inside. That's okay. All right. Let's get that lined up right up to the edge. Put that down on your surface. Press down if you want to really get that nice and aligned. Use a little dowel so that will get you right up to the very edge there. So you have nice clean seams. There we go. And we still have some wiggle room here, so that's good. Let's put some glue on the large tab here. Spread that out. Okay, let's tuck that in. Whoops, sometimes I do that, it's okay. And get that lined up. Make sure it's nice and aligned. And press down and grab our dowel. Give that a little press. Did I rip that? Nope. Thank goodness. Okay. Still have some wiggle room here. I think we'll probably run out of wiggle room once we get to these smaller sections, which is fine. I'm going to end up using a scrap piece of paper to paint my glue on those. And those are going to go in nice and easy for us. So let's get that lined up. Need to tuck that in just a tad. That looks good. Push down from the inside. There we go. And then you can see here, what I might do, just to make it easier on myself, is kind of scoot this out a little bit and get this part glued down first, the front. Spread that glue out. And we'll get that nice and aligned with the front. And then the rest of it will just kind of fall into place. And I think we'll just paint the glue from the inside to get that to hold for us. That looks good. Press that down. How's that looking there? Looks good. Okay, there we go. And of course now we don't really have much wiggle room. So this is where I will grab my little box of scrap pieces of paper. And I'll throw a little bit of glue right on that scrap. And I will literally just paint the glue onto these tabs that we still need to glue down. And you can get right into every little nook and cranny of that section there. Okay, so that tab has glue on it. And just like we've been doing, I'm just gonna line that up, press that down, get that nice and aligned. Okay, and flip this up, press down with our dowel. I'm gonna go over to this other side here. Get some glue on my scrap piece. And I'm just gonna paint that glue right onto the tab. And it's okay if you get a little bit of glue on that small triangle, it's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, get that nice and lined up. There we go. And this is gonna be the bottom, so if it's not perfect, it's okay. The top's gonna be much easier to assemble because we're gonna be putting some foam core in there. Okay, so that's all, all that's left now is this little small section. And for that, I am also going to just paint a little bit of glue on there. Okay, so we'll just pop right underneath that tab there, that small triangular tab. Make sure it's accurately lined up. And at this point, it should just kind of be in position because everything else is already in position. So that's gonna make our life a lot easier. Okay, again, just throwing a little bit of glue on that triangular tab, that last one. Paint it on there. This one is pretty good. And I'm just pushing that down with my dowel. And there we go. Okay, so there is the bottom of the base. So now let's flare these tabs out. And just to make this a little more structurally sound, we're gonna take our foam core now and pop it in there, like so. And let's just make sure that all these tabs go down. Okay, so the, the template is just a tad smaller than the actual structure itself, but enough to where when we push down on it, it'll hold the weight. Okay, so now we're gonna grab this piece with a little B on it, and let's get that anchored to the back. 
Okay, so apply that glue to that tab, spread it out a little bit, grab a piece with the B, get that nice and lined up. And now the beautiful part about having that foam core in there is you can push down and it'll grab the entire tab. And there we go. Okay, so you don't even need to bring it down. And now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just apply glue to all of these tabs. So I'm gonna go a little bit thicker because I'm gonna be spreading it out. I don't want it to dry out. And we are going to close this up in one fell swoop. But we wanna obviously, we're gonna kind of go around the horn here and keep our eyes on all of the sides just to ensure that everything is lining up correctly. And we'll give each little section a little nudge here and there as needed. Okay, so bring this down, line it up with the side opposite first, because we want it to close up nicely. Make sure all the tabs are in. That one's kind of being a pain in my, you know what? Okay, there we go, the front is lined up. Now I'm working on these sides here, then these sides here, then I'm going over here, wiping off any excess glue, going over here and there, nudging that wall in a little bit, and there we have it. Okay, and just keep on running your finger along the perimeter, making sure that this top piece, this little lid, is making good contact with everything. There we go. Okay, perfect. And that is it, and that worked out beautifully. I don't have a single gap anywhere. If you do have any gaps, grab yourself a scrap piece of paper like I've been doing, nudge it in there, add some extra glue, and should be good to go. Okay, so now that we have our base, um, I did take a little bit of ink to it just to give it a little touch of color. You can see how it's gonna sit on that base. And again, you can make it just like that without the next step that I'm gonna get into here in just a minute. We have one more thing that we need to put together for this base, and it's this little lip so that the thing doesn't go tumbling over. Um, so we have these two sections here, and it's very similar to what we just did, um, just a little different, not difficult at all. Okay, so you can see we've got these two strips, and we just need to connect them together. And of course, there's a few things that I just did not fold beforehand, and that's okay. I'm just gonna fold these tabs we got these tabs here. Just get that folded and ready to go. And again, this is gonna go right on top of the base and it's gonna act as a little lip just to kind of keep things nice and secure for us. Okay, so I'm gonna take and apply glue to one of these little triangular tabs. Nice and easy. Just get a little bit of glue on there. Keep the tabs on the same side. Okay, so like this. Just line that up and give that a press. You can take it and fold it over onto itself. This straight edge should line up. That indicates that you've got it lined up correctly. There we go. And then we'll close it up by applying glue to the other triangular tab, like so. And there we go. Now I can't put that down flat because it's not symmetrical, but I can kind of fold it onto itself just partially just to get a feel for it, okay? So that looks good. So now remember um, how we did this before, these two little sections here. So this is gonna be the straight part that's gonna come out like this. And then we have the, I believe, five-sided five -sided shape there. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. Once it's all said and done. And I'm gonna pull this down. This one's gonna be a lot easier though. I'm just gonna pop this in like so. Okay. And eventually we'll bring it in like this and like that, okay. What I want to do first is anchor it to one side. Let's just start with the back. Let's just throw a little bit of glue on that tab. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to make sure that it's nice and centered. 
in the back and pushed back as far as it'll go. And just press that down like that. Okay. Then we're going to go up to the front and throw a little bit of glue on that tab. Put it down on your surface. Get those other tabs out of the way and center that and make sure that that is out as far as it'll go as well. Just like that. Okay, so this tab and this tab are glued down. Now I think we can go in and how about we do this tab here. Just throw a little glue on that, fold it down, and just kind of push that wall in as far as it'll go. Make sure it's nice and centered. Press down if you want to use a little dowel to really get into the nooks and crannies there. That's fine too. So that one's in place. Now let's go over to the opposite side and glue that down. Fold it over. Make sure that's nice and centered. Let's take a look and make sure that the other pieces still fit nicely, and they do. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I've got this one here that we can glue down. Fold it down. Now these, the rest of this, these pieces really shouldn't be moving anymore. Okay, we'll go over here. Throw a little glue on this guy. Fold it over. Press down. Whoops. Okay, and that just leaves these four, which are pretty much they really can't move. Everyone, all the other tabs are kind of keep holding them prisoner. So we'll just throw some glue on the rest of these, fold them in, put them down on your surface. Just make sure that everything looks nice and flush in there. Press those down. And there we go. Okay, so now all the tabs are glued into place. And again, this is just the little lip that this is gonna sit on so that if it wiggles a little bit, it's not gonna go anywhere, okay? And on the actual base itself, you have a series of little markers here to help you with the positioning of this piece so that we get it nice and centered. So all we need to do at this point is just flip it over. I'm gonna go thick with some glue around the perimeter, nice and thick. Yeah, maybe just a little bit in the center. And let's spread that glue out to the very edge all the way around. Okay, <clears throat> and then using the little markers here, get that centered. And then I would use a dowel just to make sure that the very edge of this is making really good contact with our base not going to be overly visible because your lighthouse is going to be sitting on this. And this is where you're going to put your little uh, electronic tea light as well. Preferably one that has uh, a high output because it's got to, it's got to go up pretty high to get those, those top windows or that top window, I should say. Okay. So there's that. And then this should fit perfectly onto the base. It's got a little bit of wiggle room, but again, you can see that it'll kind of, keep it in place so it doesn't slide off. Okay, but that's gonna do it for the main part of the assembly of this. Now, again, I mentioned we do have an additional, um, additional base for this, which we're gonna put together now. So if you are not constructing the additional base, then you're done. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the process. I think this is probably gonna be one of my favorite pieces and I can't wait to see your version of it. It's very, very nice looking. Okay, so the lighthouse is done. And again, we included a bonus base for uh, the lighthouse. If you want to, um, well, if you want to give it something to sit on and decorate it. Uh, so again, in your download, when you cut this out, uh, this one has a number two on it, which means that you need to cut two pieces of foam core out using this template. Okay, that's gonna give it a nice sturdy base. All right, so let's go ahead and put the actual base together. It's made of these four main pieces and then we have some overlays and some grasses and all kinds of fun stuff to put on there. So obviously we wanna make sure that 
Let me get all of this folded first, which I don't know why I didn't do. Uh, but the lighthouse came out awesome. I'm very happy with it. And as I was saying during the process, I knew this was going to be, I think it's the best one out there. I hate to say it, but I really don't. And I'm sure many of you will agree. Okay, so now because it's so large, we had to break off two sections of tab. Okay, and we're going to glue those in place first. So these little guys here, this is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if you do it this way or this way. I'm going to begin by just putting glue on one side of the tab here. Okay. And we're going to spread that glue out to the very edge. Like so. And then you can do it this way where you just put this down flat, grab this large piece. Just want to make sure you get it nice and centered and right out to the very edge where that where the score lines are. Just tuck that in if necessary. Press that down. Okay. And I can fold it over. Give that an additional press. It should be pretty flush. Okay, a lot of surface area to cover here. So if you have little gaps don't hesitate to grab a scrap piece of paper and paint some extra glue in there. That's okay. All right, now let's grab another, let's grab the other side here. And we'll do the same thing. Apply our glue. Just doing a little pigtail. I right, definitely did not get enough there. I'm gonna go one more. Spread that out. All the way out to the very edge, okay. And press that down. Get that nice and centered. And to help you with the centering, you see the score line here, match it up with the score line that's connected to the little triangular tab there. And that's gonna help you ensure that you've got it lined up correctly. Then fold it back, press, keep pressing down, especially towards the ends where I tend to have some issues. Okay, and that looks great. All right, so now I'm gonna take and fold these triangular tabs in. We're gonna glue them to the neighboring walls to start creating the dimensional structure. So just a little bit of glue on that triangular tab. Bring this neighboring wall in, line it up, and press and hold. Give that a few seconds to set. Okay, quick squeeze should be all you need. And then we'll go over to this side. We'll apply our glue and hit that with our finger. Okay, there we go. My fingers are starting to get a little sticky. Been crafting for a while. This is uh, this one's definitely a little more involved, but. I know that never stopped you guys. And if anything, it actually motivates you because you know that, as they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. I'm not saying that we built Rome here or anything, but you know, usually things that take time are so much better when they're done and mean so much more. That sense of accomplishment is much more than you know, say doing a, a simple little card or something. Okay, final little triangular tab there. Bring that in, line it up, press and hold. So now we have a dimensional little container. Yeah, my fingers are super gluey right now. You guys wonder how I don't get glue on my fingers. I do, I do. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna take our foam core pieces. We're gonna slide them in here. Make sure you don't rough this thing up too much in case that glue hasn't fully set. Should fit in there nicely. There we go. There's one. <clears throat> I'll get the other one in there. I'm not worried about the fact that the sticker's still on there. No one's going to see that. That's going to be gone. 
Come on, there we go. Okay, those are in. Let's bring the tabs in. Let's make sure that everything sits nice and flat, and it does. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on one of the longer tabs to get the top piece anchored. We're gonna spread that glue out to the very edge. Okay, I'll take this piece. I got my texture side up and I'm gonna get that centered and right out to the very edge of that section. Okay. There we go, and press that down. The cool thing about having that foam core in there is you can actually push down on the entire tab, get that whole thing to really grip, and just keep kind of running your fingers along the perimeter just to ensure that it gets a good hold. Okay. Now, we've got it open, whoops. Okay, that little tab came loose there from the weight of this thing. So you wanna be careful with that. I am going to, let's see if I even need to fix that. And you know, I honestly probably really don't even have to fix it because it's kind of tucked in there. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, you could though, if you wanna be technical and thorough, I'm just gonna throw a little glue on a scrap piece of paper should have probably got a thinner one. And I'll just tuck it right in there. And then just let that set just to fix it because it did come undone. She's come undone. Good tune. Oh, that's, that's by. Okay, so let's let's hold that up a little bit so it doesn't go falling back. And we're going to need to apply glue to the remaining three tabs. I'm going to go thick on the glue here because we're going to be spreading it out anyway. Okay. Spread that glue out to the very edge. We're going to close this up. This is going to be the bottom anyway, so it's not like anyone's going to see it. But we still want to make sure it's nice and clean and crisp and as perfect as possible because that's how we roll. This is how we roll. Okay. All right, so tuck that in, bring this down, and focus on getting this side lined up, the side opposite of the side that's already hinged. Get that nice and all the way out, nice and centered. And then work on the other two sides. If you need to kind of nudge them in a little bit, that's fine, totally normal. But I actually just fell right into place, just perfect. And just keep going around the perimeter just to ensure that we don't have any gaps anywhere. There we go. Keep on going around, round and around. Perfect. Okay, nice sturdy base now. Okay, great. Let's take a look at our seams. Looks good. Just giving it a once over. There we go. Okay, nice solid base for our lighthouse to live on. And there we go. All right. Okay, so now let's decorate this thing. We've got, I'm going to start by putting the top layers on. So we have this, this really pretty piece of cardstock that's kind of like a watercolor. Um, and then we use that for, we're going to use that for our water. And then we have the, the frothy part of the tide. And then of course the sand. Oh, I'm going to actually hit that with some ink. I forgot to do that. That's okay. All right. Let's put this piece down first. You'll notice that there is a little score mark on this and that's so that the water actually goes over onto the side like so. Okay. So I don't want to overdo it with the glue on this because I'm afraid it may warp. Uh, but what I do want to do is I'm going to actually anchor this on the hinged piece first. So very lightly with the glue here, do a little curly Q and pop that right onto where the uh, 
whatever the score line is. Get that right on there. Push it up against the side. What a beautiful paper. I love that. Not exactly like water, but close enough. And because it's a white core, I may just hit this with a little bit of ink just to kind of fill that in a little bit. Let me see, where is my ink pad? There it is. I've really been obsessed with this color of Memento. It's called Teal Zeal. I've been using it a lot lately in lieu of some other blue colors. I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of ink there. I know that part's going to be visible. I can actually go a little deeper, I think. I don't want to overdo it. Oh, see what I mean? A little too much ink on there. I'm just going to rub some of that off. Just kind of help blend that a little bit. Okay, that works. All right, so let's let's get this anchored in place now. Put the cap on that. Let's bring this down. And again, with a lot of surface like this, if you kind of glob the glue on, it may sort of show through. So just go easy. I'm just gonna go around the perimeter mostly and just add a little bit to the center just so that stays put. And starting from the area here where it's already anchored, just gonna kind of push it into place, make it nice and taut. There we go. Make sure it's centered. Beautiful. Okay. And next, we can decide which side of the wall. Well, actually, no, we can't. That's gonna be the side, okay. Um, I suppose I probably should hit this with a little bit of blue just to blend this a little bit more too so it's not such a, uh, such a stark contrast. Just hit, that, hit the tips of that with a little bit of blue. Okay, that looks nice. So that's going to go right up to the very edge like that. So just that little bit is showing. So let's get that going. And there's a lot of little details here on the very edge. I wouldn't worry too much about trying to get glue on every single inch of it. Drive yourself crazy. Okay, just remember to put this on the side opposite of the side where the water flows over onto the, uh, the side there. Okay, line that up. Make sure it is flush with the back, flush with the sides. Press that down into place. There we go. Okay. Make sure your hands are clean. Take a look at that. Seams look good. It'll be covered up anyway. Okay, and then of course we've got the sand it's going to go right on top of that as well. And I need to hit that with a little bit of brown just because I don't want it to. Let me see here. Let's go. There's that. I'm going to go with a straight brown. I have a brown that's got a little bit of red in it. I'm not going to use that. Let's go right here. Now I actually bought some faux, well not, I guess it's not faux sand, it's actual sand that I may or may not actually put on this to make it like real sand. And I guess to, to keep it in place, um, I might just throw a little bit of glue right on the very edge of this so it doesn't go beyond it. But we'll see, we'll see how that works out. Okay, just hit that with a little bit of ink, create that nice little gradient transition there so it's not so, not so harsh of a transition. There we go. Okay, there we go, that looks nice. Perfect, all right, so same thing here. Let's get our glue going around the perimeter mostly. 
I'm just going to put that down. Just try to stay in the confines of the paper. And just work some glue around the perimeter. Get it close enough, it'll, it'll spread out once you push it down. Okay, so again, line this up with the back. Make sure it's nice and flush all the way on the back as well as the sides. Press that down into place. Get it down here so you can see a little bit of that glue spilled out. So you don't always have to get it all the way out to the edge. When you press down, especially if you're pulling it down this way, it'll force that glue out to the edge. Maybe not all the way to the edge, but close enough. Okay, check your seams. That looks great. And we just we still have some grasses and such to put in there, but we have uh, little markers here to help you with the placement of the lighthouse, and you can see how beautiful that's going to look once it's in place. But we're not quite done yet. Almost, just about. We have a series of grass and stone features that we're going to add to this. So let's start with the grass. So we have this, we have two of these and one that has some tabs on it. Okay. The one with the tabs is going to go on the back like so. Okay. And the other two are going to connect around the sides. So what we can do is we're actually going to actually going to put glue on the back of this. Just going to do a little line and just spread that glue out like so. And then we'll take this using our table as our guide so that we know that it's nice and flat. And just make sure that the sections where we have the tabs go over to the other side. Just press that down into place. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. Okay. And let's not forget to glue the little tab section down as well. Just a little bit of glue right there and then just bring that over. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Just a tiny little dot of glue there and flip her over. Just like that and hold that in place. <clears throat> okay. Now you'll notice on this that one side is flat and the other side kind of comes out on a curve. The curve is going to go towards the front. So this one is going to go right here like so. And we're just going to line that up with the very bottom. So go ahead and apply your glue there. And let's spread that out. You can dab it, you can spread it, whatever you want to do. Just like that. Okay, let's grab this piece, get that right on there. Make sure it's flush with the bottom. Press that down. You can even flip it like this and use your table. Press that down. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. And the same thing on the other side. Apply our glue there. All the way out to the edge. Grab the next piece. Make sure it's flush on the back and on the bottom. And press that down. Okay, so once we have the grasses in place, we have a, a series of little stone features. Um, cut these out of various darker colors and some grays. Uh, also inked with black. And then I embossed with the crackle folder. I believe that's by Doris. And we're going to start with the largest little pieces. Um, the, the pieces here have this tiny little rock on one end and that rock is going to go towards the front. Okay. So this is actually going to span the entire width and you can see, uh, based on these little hills here, where these elements are going to go. They're going to go right on there like that. Okay. So we just need to put some glue on the back of this piece and just to get that installed. We'll just do this one and the coordinating one on the other side first, uh, because the, as far as the, the decorative elements, it's both, they're both the same. Okay. So we'll throw that on there. I've got a little bit of glue in some spots. I didn't want it, but that's okay. All right. So line that up as accurately as you can get that glue off of there. 
Make sure it's flush with the bottom so that it sits nice and flat. Okay, you can push down like this. That looks good. And we'll go over to the other side. And the back is just grass, so we don't have any stone, uh, uh, sorry, we don't have any stone features. Sometimes my brain goes faster than my mouth. And that's what happens. I think a lot of people have the opposite problem. Their mouth goes faster than their brain. Okay, get that lined up just like we did on the other side. Again, making sure it's flush with the bottom. Here we go. Beautiful. Okay. All right, and then we've got uh, the next set of little rocks here. You can see where this one's gonna go. It's gonna go right here. You can see where that large hump is. So we're gonna match that up right there. And that's just to give it kind of a two-toned effect. Nice dimension. I keep grabbing the wrong bottle. So again, this is completely optional, but it's a nice touch. And I know I've seen a lot of you over the years, when you get a structure of some sort, you always wanna build around it, you know, just to kinda, of, like you said, give it a little place to, to live and call its own, like a little plot of land. So that's why we're including this, because I think you guys are going to enjoy customizing this. It'd be kind of cool to get like a, maybe like a little shipwrecked boat to put on the sand, or maybe build a little fire, throw a tiny guitar on there. Oh my God, why do I keep doing that? Okay. It's like, a, I don't know, it's a fun little escape build your own little world out of paper of all things who would have thought okay there we go so I've got that next set of rocks there okay then we have and we're again just gonna kind of go down the road here and take a look at what we have and how everything works we've got just a handful of uh, things left here these two little guys remember the tiny little part on the front those are going to go on the front, okay, but the rest of these, this little guy, I don't know why he wasn't embossed, but this one is. We've got two that look like this, and that is going to go on this little section here, so that's an overlay for that to make that two-toned. Here's this one that's going to go on this to make that two-toned, and I'll show you where that goes in a second, and then this guy here. It's gonna go right here to make this one two-toned. And this one's gonna go here to make that one two-toned. So let's actually, let's just glue these in place on top of their brother or sister, like so. Let's do this one. Oh, that's, that doesn't look right. Oh, it goes here, okay, sorry goes on the opposite side. There we go. That one's going to go there. And this one's going to go here. And then, of course, like I said, we've got the two tiny little rocks. And I'll show you where those go in a second, in case you forgot. OK, so on this side here, <clears throat> That is, let's go on this side first. Okay, this little guy with th the set of three is gonna go right here, like that. Okay, so let's throw a little bit of glue on him. And that's gonna go right there. Whoops. And the reason that's happening is because these pieces are embossed so it's not making contact with the entire layer of paper, but you can see how nice that looks with the two-toned effect. Okay, and then again, as I mentioned, uh, on the very end, we have that tiny little rock, and that's just to give it a little extra color. Okay, just make sure you grab the right one. Just one little dot of glue. 
telling you, it all comes down to all the little details. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to grab these guys here, and these guys are going to go right there. And then we just repeat the same thing on the other side, except it's just mirrored. Let's pop that into place. There we go. I'm going to give that an extra press. Okay. And then on the other side, again, the three rocks go right here. up and press that into place. There we go. Don't forget about our little guy here up in front. Okay. There he goes. And then our little two in the back a little glue on there and voila okay there we go all right so that's it now uh, again i'm actually not going to glue this down yet because i'm going to photograph it both ways and if i glue it down then i won't be able to take it off uh, but what you're going to do if you want to use the base is apply glue to the entire bottom of this little uh, secondary base and you can see we have a series of markers here to help you with the placement of this okay and that's going to go down right there okay and then of course your lighthouse is going to go right there and now it has its own little its own little scene so that is going to do it for our lighthouse. Definitely one of the more involved projects, but as you can see, uh, it's a treat and it is super fun uh, just to even look at. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please head over to our YouTube channel. As you can see, uh, the channel is growing. We've got uh, 56,400 and some change as far as subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So thanks again, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.